are here with the best new show online. It's not the Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Ellen, or Jimmy Oprah show. Oh, no. This is Valuetainment Presents The Right Show. We are going to fight our way through the flu season and give you the news so you don't have to go through it yourself. We make it a little more fun with uh, comedy. Today's stories, no different than any other week. Airplanes are blowing the doors right off. The homeless are going back to high school. We explore the tunnels of New York and watch the new AOC of New Zealand start her parliamentary meeting with a war chant. What is going on in the world? We're going to find out together. It's happening right here, right now, on The Right Show. Let's go. Starting it off right, did you hear that thud? That's Chris Christie dropping out of the campaign. We're going to head to the local Cheesecake Factory where he had his last campaign stop to hear all about it. My goal has never been to be just a voice against the hate and the division and the selfishness of what our party has become under Donald Trump. It's also been to win the nomination and defeat Joe Biden and restore our party and our country to a new place of hope and optimism in this country. I've always said that if there came a point in time in this race where I couldn't see a path to accomplishing that goal, that I would get out. And it's clear to me tonight that there isn't a path for me to win the nomination, which is why I'm suspending my campaign tonight for president. Well, if you donated any money to Chris Christie, it probably went to Krispy Kremes. Too bad the guy couldn't just get his campaign off the ground. I guess uh, most of those donations, if you did donate to Chris Christie's campaign, probably went to catering. And finally, farewell, Chris Christie. No one's going to miss you. Nobody was going to vote for you. But even though you're not running for office, please, just run. Run. In other news, we're going to ask you, before we get started, where are you from, and what is your favorite awards show? The reason I ask, the Golden Globes have always been my favorite show, and Joe Coy hosted just not too long ago. The problem is, the celebrities were not in a good mood. They didn't want to laugh. They did not want to have fun with poor Joseph and this guy. He usually does theaters with 15,000 people in attendance. I'm going to go to one next week. But this crowd of a few hundred, not his crowd. In fact, he wasn't even the first choice of host. I was going to be the first host. We have some very rare footage of it. Take a look. They didn't even laugh at me. Why were they going to laugh at Joe? It looked a little something like this. What an honor to be here at Golden Globes. I'm your host, Kayvon, and I got to be honest, this is an exciting night. First of all, we got Taylor Swift here. No surprise there. She doesn't play football. She's always at the games. She's not in movies, and she's at the Golden Globes. <laughs> oh, come on. Name one movie you've been in. That's what I thought. <laughs> that was pretty good, guys. Come on. And then we have the people who made the Barbie movie in attendance, huh? I love Barbie. Am I the only one that used to take off uh, G.I. Joe's pants and have them bump uglies with the Barbie? <laughs> oh, please, we all did that with the 69. Yeah, 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 and what else? Uh, oh, I know who we got, Meryl Streep here, AKA Harvey Weinstein's best friend. <laughs> what, it actually happened. I'm not making this stuff up, guys. Ah, and, uh, oh, you guys are going to love this one. Robert Downey Jr. How come he gets to keep working after doing blackface? I did it one time, I got beat up. <laughs> Black power. <laughs> Those Boys and Girls Club kids are no joke. Hey, what's going on? Hey, no, 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 no. I'm not done yet. You can't fire me, I'm Middle Eastern. Where you have an Asian girl? That was a lot of fun. Remember that. You can't fire me, I'm Middle Eastern. One of the best lines of it. But that's really what was going on. Those celebrities were being teased very lightly. They did not want to laugh. They were upset. They were offended. They weren't even sure what the jokes were, but they just knew something wasn't right. Well, Joe Coy is not a Hollywood insider, so when he did those jokes, they kind of just stared at him like, how did the guy uh, that's supposed to be parking my car get the microphone? So I feel bad for you, Joe. Can't wait to see your live show. I know you're going to get the last laugh as you fill up stadiums for the next year off of this experience. Now, road trips are about to get a lot more boring. What am I talking about? Well, the Department of Transportation has said jokes will be banned from those humorous electronic messages on the highway. The U.S. Federal Highway Administration has given states two years to get rid of the jokes. No more funny business. Administration officials said overhead electronic signs with obscure meanings and references to pop culture or those intended to be funny will be banned in 2026 because they could be misunderstood or distracting to drivers. 
I want to get your opinion on that. Do you like being on a road trip and seeing those funny signs? Or do you think, oh, no, those are going to cause problems and take my eyes off the road? We're going to find out here because here I put together some of the best signs. Take a look at this one. There are four eyes in Mississippi, but two eyes need to be on the road. Oh, that's pretty funny, but I could see how if you're in Mississippi, there's four eyes. Let me count them. One, two, three, four. Oh! You see, that could cause a problem because Mississippi, hard to read and drive at the same time. Take a look at this one. Don't drive star-spangled hammered. That's a fun one. So 4th of July, and they're trying to just have a little bit of fun on there. Did it come with a turn signal? Kind of a passive-aggressive sign out there from Kentucky. Eh, not too bad, but if that's distracting you when you're crashing, then those got to go. Here's this one. Texting and driving leads to the dark side. Look at that. That's Jackson Evers International Airport. That must have been in Florida, I guess. Uh, leave it to Florida with these hilarious signs. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jackson Evers Airport. I don't know where that is, but they must be fans of Star Wars in that territory. And here's the final one. Never going to see it again, so enjoy it while you can, folks. Your steering wheel is not a hands-free device. So I don't know. There's a lot of people driving with no hands out there. I mean, maybe if you have one of those new Teslas with the autopilot and here are some lesser known signs you will also not see hey dummy unlike your covid mask your seatbelt actually saves lives you're not going to see that one anymore this one they were thinking of doing don't be a blinker bigot as you transition from one lane to the other goodbye to that one turn down your tunes and stop driving like a buffoon that's uh going to be one that you're not going to see and if you ain't properly merging you're probably a virgin Say goodbye to that. And the final one you will never see after this. Safe driving is like safe sex. It's not as fun, but it'll get you there. We'll be back with more from The Right Show. Say goodbye to those nice signs. Never again. <laughs> Have you heard of the motto, keep Portland weird? Well, it just got a lot more weirder. Because Portland had a very interesting experience. Alaska Airlines plane, shh took off everyone was having fun for the first five ten minutes and then poof the door blew off it looked like this days after a cabin door plug blew off during a flight out of portland people are finding spare parts that cabin door plug a headrest and a phone all found close to each other in southwest portland NTSB shared these photos of part of that door plug, which a Portland teacher found in his backyard. Next door, Diane Flaherty had yet to make the connection. On the edge of the patio over by the fountain, I discovered this headrest. I'm like, that's weird. Where did the dogs find a headrest? She realized it looked just like an Alaska Airlines headrest from her latest flight. Not too far away, Sean Bates found a phone while looking for the plane's debris. Uh, the screen wasn't locked, so when I opened it up, uh, it had a baggage claim receipt for Alaska 1282 and flight travel plans, so I had to call the NTSB. Bates said he was stunned he found anything. Probably the number one comment I get is, sure, I dropped my phone five feet off a table and it cracks, and this phone lines out of an airplane from 16,000 feet up and it's just fine. What a lucky person. They got their phone back. My phone falls right off this counter, like he said. It's broken. It fell out of an airplane, 16,000 feet. He found it in the field. Is this yours? Amazing. Portland is living up to their name. They are staying weird. Now, when that door, and they kept calling it a door. It's not really a door. It's called a plug. I didn't know airplanes had plugs. But some of the parts of the airplane that had a window in it, it's not really meant to be a door, and it just popped right off. It created a suction and started pulling things out of it. Big safety issue. And it made me think, you know how we used to kind of resent those bigger passengers that needed to take up two seats? Now I got a plan. Big passengers along the window seats, if the door blows off, they get sucked in. Could save a lot of lives. Big passengers, we need you. Get on those planes and sit by the exits. Do it for your country and the freedom of our people. Might save a lot of lives. Hmm? Now we're seeing that there's a benefit to everything. Now, if that happened to you, what would you do if a door blew off, suction, and you're going out? I want to know what you would do to plug that hole in an emergency. And just remember, keep your seatbelt on even when you're in the air because you could go on a 
30,000 foot skydive with no chute. That's on Alaska Airlines, but let's talk about another airline, not Southwest, Kanye West. This guy is always making kind of headlines because he's always doing something weird or he's up to no good. And here, Kanye West showed up to a casino in Vegas with his date. She was pointing south because she decided to wear something that you normally you might see maybe, maybe at a very exotic lounge. This was her walk around wear in the wind. Take a look right here. Can you believe this? Kanye says, why don't I get my privacy? Well, look what you're wearing, dude. Your date is going to get attention, and you're Kanye West. So don't act like you're trying to lay low and uh, not be bothered when you brought that to the party. Unbelievable. Are you a fan of that look? Would you wear that in public? I want to know. Because, you know, whatever Kanye does, other people try to emulate. So we might see a lot of boobies all around. Next. In New York, the homeless are going back to high school. Now, do you think they're going to sign up and do a program and learn how to reintegrate themselves into society and improve their skills in their life? No, that is not why the homeless are going back to high school. The homeless are going there to sleep because we've had a lot of immigration. We've had a lot of people that are hard on their luck. And so the school decided, why don't we shut down high school, take the kids out of school during the school year, and we will house these people in the gym and the classrooms because it's very cold in the winter and it looks a little something like this. Buses upon buses are coming, many of them from different walks of life, some of them from the open border, and in they go to this high school. This high school in New York is in session, but not anymore. The kids were told at James Madison High School, excellence in education, that they are no longer going to attend school this week because people are going to be indoors there. So. I want to know what you think about that. I mean, do you think it's okay for the homeless to just hang out in a high school? Let's find out over here. I was told that we had to get boosts and immunizations and be safe when we lived in America. New Yorkers, first responders, what do they have to do? They had to get these immunizations before they could work at the hospital or become first responders, a threat of losing their job. But then you cross the border illegally no one's checking for COVID. Nobody's checking for measles, mumps, rabies, any kind of vaccination. And not only that, join our high school. Sleep in here. There's got to be an issue there. There has to be an issue with people sleeping. Think about the viruses, the disease, making a place of refuge for where you're supposed to be studying. Kids do PE there. You know, there was just a homeless guy probably may have urinated the floor, and now I'm getting my head smashed in there during a wrestling tournament. These are the things we got to think about, and nobody wants to talk about it because it seems mean and anti-human. But I have a question for you guys. If we're going to be voting blue and you want to help everybody and keep the border open, then how come the people that voted blue don't house the homeless? Why do they got to go to a government installation? I believe the Obama's household and Oprah and maybe even Joe Biden, could house at least 3,000 people in their different homes across America. So vote for blue, and you should have to have some homeless living with you. That's my new policy. Vote for me. We'll be back with more of The Right Show right after this. Now, we come back to New York because the crazy news keeps coming from New York. None other than from an Orthodox Jewish synagogue. That's why this segment of the news we're calling Jew York. Take a look here. Orthodox Jews riot after police discover secret tunnels under a New York synagogue. And when you see what happens, it's very confusing. We're going to watch it together and figure out what's going on. Podcasters, you're just listening. I'll try to narrate along. Here they have an abandoned synagogue area. There's sheets up, and they just pulled a Jewish guy out of a hole in the wall. Now there's about 50 other Jewish guys trying to attack somebody. And this guy, the rabbi, is just dancing. He's dancing, having fun. We pan over to the left. They're putting their yarmulkes on. And now the Jews are throwing the pews over and the desks. So I don't know if they're mad at the police, if they're mad at the rabbi that was in the hole in the wall. They're kind of now fighting each other. The police are shoving people back. No one's extremely violent, but it's just a little weird. So what in the Einstein bagels is happening here? 
Now the police have multiple zip tie handcuffs. They've only arrested one guy and they're protecting him. So I think they're going after him. But he's giggling and dancing and doing a little jig there. So that was, I am still perplexed. I've been told after lots of research that there is a uh, tunnel that was built under there. A lot of Jewish people were digging the tunnels. That could be for preservation in case another Holocaust goes off. Some people say it was for kind of uh, not so good reasons. Maybe there's a women's area. They could go and peek and watch what they're doing in there. Here's the final Jew that got out and got away. Take a look. There's a sewer grate. A citizen filmed this with his camera. Orthodox Jew pops right out of the sewer, hits the camera, and goes running off. So uh, that's not the sewer system. That's the Jewer system. What do you think of that? When we come back, we're going to have a lot more to digest, but things are getting out of control. Stick around. All right, now we have Hunter Biden. This guy is above the law. I was told nobody, nobody's above the law. Not a joke. But it seems like the guy who said that, his own son, is not facing too many consequences. We know there was a laptop that was found. It had all the details of how Hunter runs his business, how Joe and his brother are implicated in that, and of course, 10% always goes to the big guy. Who's the big guy? We, we believe it's Biden. Uh, anyone with a brain believes that as well. Well, check this out. He got called in for a subpoena by Congress. He's supposed to testify, and he got up and left right in the middle of it. I what would happen if you and I got up and left when someone wanted to talk to us? Never happens. Watch Hunter. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair recognizes Ms. Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, apparently, oh, you're afraid of my words. Whoa. Uh, here goes. <laughs> wow. So he's out. It's like. I like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Now I got to reclaim the time. <laughs> wow, that's too bad. <laughs> mm hmm. I think it's clear and obvious for everyone watching this hearing today that Hunter Biden is terrified of strong conservative Republican women because he can't even face my words as I was about to speak to him. What a coward. What a coward. Honestly, I think Trump has had to speak to Congress or at least have a uh, interview with them. I know uh, Trump Jr. had to. I think it was six hours he sat there. And they're like about to ask him one question. He's like, you know what? I'm out. Take a Coke break. Looking for that Parmesan cheese. So we need to get Hunter Biden back there. We need to interview Hunter. And I want to know. I want answers. And I want him before he runs out the clock with this whole re-election thing. I think that's the plan there. That's my conspiracy theories. And maybe Hunter Biden needs to face a parliament, a Congress, a group of lawmakers that won't take that kind of crap for an answer. And to see what that would look like, we move over to New Zealand. New Zealand has a thing called the Haka. They also have put into office the AOC of New Zealand. She's the youngest lawmaker ever elected there. She's kind of being touted as the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She wears white suits, but she wants to start meetings now with her traditional war chant. It's very intense kind of doesn't fit in a government setting. Well, you be the judge. Wouldn't be the most attractive thing I've ever seen when you say, oh, you know, but we don't want to make fun because if you make fun of it, they will threaten to murder you. You have to say this was beautiful. I loved it. I respect it. And I want to know more. However, I'll take a different view. The haka is very important to show respect. But let's take a look at what it was for initially. It's known as the war challenge or the war cry. The whole point of being in a lawmaker's office, you know, in Congress is you're not supposed to be going to war right there. You're supposed to be having a civil debate. So maybe the war cry isn't needed in a comfortable air-conditioned building that's not traditional. It's traditionally performed by men before going to war. And the intense facial reactions are meant to intimidate and scare the enemy. Hunter was scared he left. They didn't have to do that. And in it, some of the lines are, it is my time, 
It is my moment. Our dominance rises. Our supremacy emerges. I was told you're not supposed to be extra dominant and full of supremacy whenever you're addressing other people, especially in a diplomatic way. So we got to figure out what is this? Are you, are you pro Hakka or not? I want to hear from you right over here. Do you think the Hakka should be done in office or they should chill out and save it for football games, outdoor adventures, and going to actual war? Can't wait to hear from you. We'll be back with more from The Right Show right after this. And nothing better than ending this episode with a little laughter because we've gone through a lot, folks. We've had doors flying off airplanes. We've had Jews coming up out of the sewers. And we've had people yelling and cheering and intimidating you. But we're not going to let that hold us down. We end every episode with laughter so we can go into the week feeling good and come back and talk about more disgusting, dirty things next week. So let's end with a little comedy clip. This came from one of my live shows, and this was a lot of fun. And then I made a mistake I didn't even know. I said, where's all the LGBTQ students? Make some noise! At that show, the woman got offended. One of the students, she came up. Wait, I just called her a she. Hold on. <laughs> they. They all came up at the same time. Because it was one person. She goes, it's LGBTQIAA+, you idiot. And then she stormed off. I was like, wait, I didn't know they did an update. <laughs> Did you guys know they did an update? No. If you did, that's cool. You're like an iPhone 16. You're updated. I'm a little older. I'm an iPhone 7. I'm not quite there. iPhone 7 used to be good. It's not as good anymore, but don't hate on the iPhone 7. It had its time. I had to go home and Google it so I don't offend other students. I go, what's LGBTQIAA+. And the more you Google that stuff, the more the advertisements start changing on your computer. <laughs> My suggested items are completely different than they were last year. We think you'd like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Add to cart. We'll see. <laughs> Add to cart. Oh, I just bought a new one. Wait till it gets here. 30 days free shipping. Folks, did you enjoy the show? That is the end of The Right Show. We wake America up with laughter. We tell truth through comedy, and we do it with a smile. If you want to see a live tour date, these are them on the screen. Go on k-vaughncomedy.com. Houston, Arlington, Tacoma, Washington, Louisville, Fort Wayne, and Appleton. We're going to be adding San Diego soon, as well as Reno, Nevada. That's where it is. Can't wait to see you next week. Thank you for watching The Right Show. Enjoy the rest of the week, and we'll come back next time with even more news to cover. Bye.